continuing our proving ground, our creature scape. So what I have is my assignment one that I cleaned up, and then I brought in my PNG creature from assignment two, saved as a PNG so that it's nicely like a sticker, no background around it. Now, when we did assignment two, we tried to have everything kind of shown clearly and lit evenly. But now we're putting it into an environment where the lighting might not necessarily match. And so we're going to learn how to fix the lighting in a non-destructive way. And then to improve assignment one, I showed you how we could use texture fills. If I put them up to 100% opacity, you'll see what these are. These are just kind of like cloudy textural layers. Here, I'm going to use, put it on top of everything. There we go. These textural layers that we can kind of see through. And it gives atmosphere to the air, especially with a scene like this, it's kind of morning light. You get lens flares. You get just kind of effects that help mask some of the things you might not like so much about your composition. All right. So now, let me see. Now I want to think about adjustments, just basic kind of color shifts. And then I'm going to get to some new tools to help sync this creature into the environment and make it really match. The things we need for the proving ground is we need the environment to match in terms of its angle of anatomy and its lighting. So I haven't posed this creature at all. I haven't really changed it. I've just scaled it to be at least 25% of this overall image. So that is helpful. But otherwise, we get to make all those decisions still. And I'm just softening atmosphere and certain layers to reveal a little bit more of the landscape where I think it's a little too blurry. Another nice thing is you can always pose your creature to cover up areas that you don't think are as uh, successful. You know, I don't think this is a particularly interesting area, so it's nice to use my character to kind of cover that up. Then I have the jungle ruins back here. And just every decision you make, you're just trying to improve upon what was there before using your compositing skills. If you feel like your texture fills are getting too heavy, then you can always dim them. And in this case, I think I'm going to use image adjustment right on my kind of colorful rainbow clouds. I'm going to go right to hue saturation and I'm just going to take that saturation down a bit. You know, that's too much. This is about the right amount. I can always shift the hue as well. But I want it to feel jungly and very humid with that heavy air. Okay, now, if I just turn off my creature at this stage, that should be an improved assignment for assignment number one. You know, you look at it, And let's see, everywhere should be pretty clean. You can see where everything comes from. Because this could be a good portfolio piece.
to print for the midterm and for your final portfolio. This is a little sharp, so I'm going to use filter and blur and blur out these kind of fragments of trees that I don't want you know, up there. I didn't quite reach it far enough, so I'm going to use my lasso and come all the way down here on this layer and blur all of this. Filter, gouge, and blur. There we go. All right. There we see it. And even though this is my creature state escape project, I've already worked a little bit more on this. than I did my first assignment. So I might use this to resubmit my assignment and improve it. It's a little bit of burning in the midtones on this palm tree. And that helps. Okay. And then there's lots of blurriness in this atmosphere that I want to just take down a bit. But it's all about organizing where you want your focal points to be. So I am going to save this to save my progress. This is for proving ground number one. But then I'm also going to save this as a copy. So I think I've improved it to my desktop. And you can do this at any time. Just turn your creature off. And I'm going to change this name to assignment one resubmission. So we talked about in our first question of the day, advantages and disadvantages of digital over traditional. So one big advantage of digital art is this way of having multiple versions of something, multiple solutions to the problem. Because sometimes when you come to it with new eyes in the morning, having not worked on it since last Wednesday, you might make different decisions. You might see things. So if I now go back to assignment one, here is my new submission for my JPEG. Remember, I titled it resubmission. You can submit as many resubmissions as you like. So this was the resubmission I submitted on Wednesday. And this will be hopefully a better resubmission because now it's got you know more adjustment of the colors of the texture fills and a little bit more focus given to this area which was a problem problem area kind of blending the layers differently and so these shifts might be subtle but you have to decide kind of which one you want to print. Yeah, it is tricky. Okay, so at any time you can always resubmit. You just want to make sure you keep them organized so you know what to print from. So then I'm also going to say file save as, and I'm going to rename this not proving ground one, but assignment one, resubmission. I'm going to save that to the desktop as a PSD. And you can always save them to your cloud as well. 
And then I'm going to organize those into my assignment one folder. I mark my PSD files as green. So I have the original one and then I have the resubmission. And then I have the original one, my first resubmission, my second resubmission. So I might even title that resubmission number two. And that all brings me back now to my Creaturescape, which is where I took my assignment to cutout, moved it in just like this. If we put it on the very top, you'll see how it looks. Oh, and I kind of like it there because it covers up like my least favorite part of this background, which is these leaves there. And you can try multiple some positions, right? And you can try multiple scales, different sizes. So I'm actually just going to go with this position. And now, as soon as you move that creature in, then you're going to save it as a new name. So proving ground number one. Creaturescape. You can have lots of versions of things, but you need to keep them organized. Save it to the desktop. We're going to mark it as green. My working file. And that's going to replace this one. All right. So, it's going to keep it on the desktop for now. We are trying, if I open the assignment, we are trying to meet these criteria of the Proving Ground rubric. Let's get to it. Oh, I'm in the wrong assignment. So you can always get a shortcut to the assignments by going to assignments, scrolling down. So we go to Proving Ground 1, where we post. It's worth one and a half points. This is the rubric. So first of all, we're going to have to make sense of the data. And then this is what we can work on right now. Did you place your PNG creature file onto a landscape background image in a way that utilized a common light direction and accommodated for the angle of your creature's anatomy? So first of all, I have to pose my creature. I'm going to make multiple copies of my creature just so I can show you some different approaches. One situation you might be in, because you can use Command T, right, and transform, is your creature for your landscape, you want to make it pretty small. You know, I just had the vision of this bird being kind of roosted in this castle, for instance. So I angle it, I put it there, maybe I flip it. We're going to talk more about how to position it, but flipping it doesn't really work. So let's say I wanted that. In order to make your, your overall creature scape meet the requirements where the creature is at least 25% of it, you're going to then want to use your guides to frame in a new composition that showcases your creature. So I would frame a new composition that's quite a bit smaller. Right? It just depends what kind of aspects I want. So maybe something like that. And then I would crop it down to fit that size. Hey. So when we, come on, when we crop it, now you can see I have the creature where I wanted it. It's kind of small and perched in the church. Then I will continue to kind of fix it up, integrate it, fit it into this environment. But the difference is when we get to our first criteria, we're going to have to accurately identify the physical dimensions. Bless you. So if I go to image size, I'll see that it's no longer 8 by 10. It's, it's only 5 inches by 4 inches at 350. And if I uncheck resample and say, well, at 300 pixels per inch, is that 8 by 10 or larger? No. So then this becomes screen resolution at 72 pixels per inch. And at 72...